Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. How are you doing today? I'm back with another interview. Uh, thanks to Craig Thatcher for putting me in touch uh, with today's guest. Um, I'm going to bring him on without further ado. This is Robert Getzel. How are you doing, my friend? Hi, Aaron. How are you today? I'm very well. I, was, I just had a very nervous moment about saying your name correctly because I, I never want to get people's names wrong on the show. So it's Getzel like pretzel, right? Well, that's right. And I'm also <laughs> thinking I shouldn't call you Martin Short. So we also have the same problem. I, yeah. And not, not many people can say Aaron the way I pronounce it either. Anyway, okay. that, that's fine. That's yes, fine. Sir. Now, I'm really looking forward to this today. We have a slightly different format. We're going to show you some artwork and some guitars and the museum and things on the camera. And mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you about my experience. I'm not too familiar with what you do and what you've done with Martin. So I'm going to be asking you questions as someone kind of brand new to this. And if you want to ask questions in the chat, please do. Um, that'd be awesome. I'd love to get your questions as well. So what we'll do is, can, you, can we start with who you are, where you're from, how you got um, working with Martin, just your background, and then we'll um, move into the, the artwork and the Martin Museum. Sure. Well, you know, it's not a great story. Uh, I was born with a talent, and I guess so from very early age, uh, drawing seemed to attract me, whether it was some kind of drawing, painting, uh, something creative, very good, uh, doing things with my hands. And I think my parents must have recognized that because my father was a 40-year-old, a 40-year man in the phone company. And I think he really wanted me to follow that pursuit, get a job, get a steady paycheck. And I have a feeling when I said I want to be an artist, he must have recognized something about, well, he's probably not going to be good at anything else. Let's send him to art school and let him pursue that dream, which um, says a lot about the love that he had for me. And uh, I'm sure he wore out his rosary beads praying about my paycheck every week because you know, for 30 years, I haven't had a steady paycheck as a freelance artist, but you know, I, something... I, know, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, right. So as an artist, um, it's something that I pursued in high school. I was known as the class artist, um, and then I went to art school in Newark, a very lovely little um, public art school, uh, Newark School of Fine Industrial Art, and I just pursued that um, endeavor. Got small art jobs, but then I finally broke away from any kind of steady work and started doing freelance work, which is, uh, as you know, just tough to come by sometimes because you're, you're out there uh, calling art directors, contacting companies, and trying to find somebody who'll give you some work. And so you get your portfolio together and you go around with this, you know, big flat suitcase and you open it up thinking this is the best stuff they're ever going to see. <laughs> and, you know, you don't know if it's falling flat or they're really happy until you get a job or not. So, um, but how I came about with Martin, it's kind of an interesting story. You know, things were a little dicey for a long time as a freelance artist. In fact, uh, we were shopping in secondhand clothes, trying to make ends meet. And I approached Chris Martin. I, I was getting desperate. I approached Chris Martin. I gave him a call at the factory and I said to him, Chris, do you think I could come up and apply for a job? And, um, 
And then I said something really stupid. I said, and please don't influence anybody up there, you know, when I'm applying. And he said, don't worry, I won't. And I applied and oh, told hang, hang, hang on though, why, 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 why would that, why would you, why would he influence anybody? Well, I kind of wanted to get the job on my own merit. Uh, but I don't think you explained that you're related, did you? Oh, right. <laughs> so I'm so, that. <laughs> that's right. That's a good question. <laughs> um, so yes, Chris Martin and I are related um, on his mom's side. Um, we share a great grandfather. His, his grandfather on his mom's side was a doctor in town, in Lyndhurst, where I reside. And um, Dr. Sims bought property in Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania, not far from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, many, many, many years ago, I think in the 30s or 40s, as a retreat, as a, as a small town doctor, you needed a retreat. Otherwise, if you hung around town, you were going to be called for you know um, home visits because somebody's sick. So you needed to get away. And he had this farm in Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania. And um, I imagine that's where Chris's mom met Frank Martin, somewhere in that area from Sailorsburg and Nazareth. But so when I was growing up on weekends, it was like a, a compound um, where all the relatives would go and gather for the weekend. It was wonderful. So I had 10, 12, maybe 15 cousins all up there. I don't have any brothers and sisters. And Chris Martin was one of those cousins. Mm. And we would all just, it was just a wonderful experience because we're out there in the woods, farmland, uh, a, a lake to swim in, in the winter, ice skating. It was just a great place. The funny thing is that Chris Martin, actually at the time with his mom and um, brother and sister, were living in the same town of Lyndhurst that I reside in now. Mm. And we had to drive 90 miles to see each other because we didn't see each other much at all at that time when he was living down here, but we would always see each other on weekends and summer vacations. So um, that's my backstory with Chris Martin. So we grew up together along with these cousins and um, he went off, you know, to pursue his interests before he settled in with a company and I pursued my art interest by going to art school. So there was some separation time between us and then uh, I got married and had families and Chris Martin also got married and eventually had a family as well. So there was a separation. You know, we weren't keeping in touch much. Um, and so when things were getting a little desperate around here as far as my art career and I called him up um, and asked him, you know, about applying for a job and not giving his influence. Mm. Um, and he said, yeah, don't worry, I won't. That was probably one of the dumber things I've said. But I had a wonderful meeting with Dick Boak and I really felt valued and heard, but there was really nothing for me at the time. Right. And um, knowing some of the history of Martin Guitar, I asked if I could maybe illustrate a children's book. Not that he would commission me, but maybe on my own. So uh, Dick must have loaded up a box of all sorts of material for me to read and understand the history of the museum. and and the company itself and, and all the guitars and, and just a lot of reading material, which I absorbed very much and started a children's book as far as writing a manuscript. I didn't really start illustrating it much, but I was putting together some black and white illustrations, getting ready to go. And a little bit after that, Chris Martin and I had a cousin that passed away. And we met at the funeral home during the, the uh, visitation and got reacquainted. And as Chris was leaving, he threw out this invitation, which is, you know, one of these moments that changes your life forever. Mm. If you ever have an idea, send, send a design to Martin Guitar. And I'm like, wow, that's the first time I got invited to do that. And so, you know, driving home, I had all these ideas whirling around in my head. What was I going to do? And I put together minute I got home, a little Johnny Cash sort of black and white illustration, thinking, well, you know, Johnny Cash plays Martin and, and I'm a big fan. And then I realized as I was working on this, that this was the wrong approach because I saw this 1883 established uh, date on, on the cover of the magazine and realized they're going to do 175th anniversary. Maybe that's the direction I need to go. And since I did all this research for this children's book, I was able to grab some images of C.F. Martin Sr., uh, the, uh, the uh, Stoffer model, the logo, the old factory, and incorporate it into a guitar design, which is not as easy as 
you think, <laughs> because sure, right in the middle of this guitar is a damn sound hole and a bridge, and it's like the best <laughs> part of the real estate of a piece of artwork. So you have to really compose the painting around that. Mm. And so to finish this really long story, I sent this illustration um, up to the factory. And as legend has it, it arrived the day that Dick Boak was going to go into a meeting to discuss the marketing and, and the direction of this 175th celebration. And lo and behold, they open up an envelope, I was told, and here was this artwork in here that fit the bill perfectly. And I can't tell you, I've never had a project or, or a company respond. So I mailed it and three days later, I'm getting a phone call. Robert, would you like to work with us? And here's the name of the fellow, Tim Teal, who mm. I've been friends with ever since, who will work you and, and help you along with this project. And so that was the beginning really of my association with Martin Guitar. That's a great story. So uh, yeah, and, and I'd love to tie all this together. So we had Dick Boak on for an interview. We've had Tim Teal on for an interview. So you can see her, yep. obviously, obviously Chris Martin as well. So you can see everything in the company's kind of coming together. Yep. So, okay, so was that, I got some questions. Was the children's book ever released? I'm sorry? Was the children's book ever released that you worked on? Uh, no, it's still in my filing cabinet, <laughs> ready to work on. The reason I chose to, to, to do a, a children's book is I had worked on several for a company in, in New Jersey uh, called Troll Communications. Uh, they filed bankruptcy and Scholastic picked up a few of the titles, but I was already in an illustrating children's book and felt that I maybe had a resource as far as publishing goes and um, could could maybe pursue that all on my own. So that sounds um, like a that sounds like a cool book. I, I I'd, I'd like to see that finished myself. Um, well, that keep in, be, you know, keep tuned. <laughs> yeah, you could they could have that in the eighteen thirty three shop. It seems it seems like an ideal thing. Um, so that's awesome. So okay, so you sent that artwork, which and we can check that out later, right? So what what happened next? Like like for anyone that doesn't know, the, the way I've discovered your artwork without realizing it is that I saw some of the guitars that you often see at Summer Nam with the printing on top of the guitars. So yes. I, I was I, I without, without realizing it, I was aware of your work, which is which I love I love this story too because I'm like, well, they put their paint are they painting are they screen printing on guitars? I knew a little bit about it. I saw um, I saw Dick Boak's guitar that had that on it. Yes. I remember seeing, uh, we'll see as we go through them, um, people will be familiar. I'm sure everyone's seen your work without realizing it's you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I even went to the factory one day to visit and they had me, they, they, they just happened to be filming for the Summer Nam where they had the polka dogs artwork, yes. right. which I think is a famous painting, right? Yes. You have to forgive me. I'm not an art con connoisseur. I'm a guitar connoisseur. <laughs> I should. I, think, I should know these things. Um, Dick Boke, I think, did a lot of it on mm. computer, but he had taken some images that he had hand drawn years before, right? And, well, and reworked some ideas and combined his his drawing, which he's a beautiful draftsman. Dick mm. Boke was so influential. I can't tell you my career up there. He was just a great guy to work with. But mm. yeah, Dick was quite a draftsman, and he did do the stipple technique. But then I believe he might have scanned it into a a program and kind of manipulated the art from there. I don't know if there's a complete Dick Boak artwork, but. So, so just to finish my story, that guitar with the dogs, I played that. If you look at the Summer Nam video from the Martin Factory, that's, and you hear the guitar playing, that's me playing the guitar on that video. Oh. So I, I like that this is all kind of coming together for me. I didn't know a lot yeah. of this stuff. So, so okay, so let's, let's focus on the guitars then. So how did this printing the artwork on the guitars Begin. Was that I presume that was Dick's idea, or did this happen when you came in at that point? What 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 was the time frame there? Well, so since I'm coming into this very new, all I knew is that I needed to produce. Um, they were doing a a. These were models that they were going to make in Mexico at the time, using HPL. So they needed artwork for a DX, which is a dreadnought version, and an LX, which is a I guess a little Martin version. And they wanted this hand painted guitar all before NAM. And I think I came on board maybe September uh, or so. So I had to produce a lot of artwork before December, January, when they were shipping these guitars out. So they were going to produce this image on an HPL top, which was prior to them um, purchasing this Mamaki printer that they use to make the guitars now. Mm -hmm. So the HPL top was pre printed. Uh, on material that they would have then taken and created a top for and 
attached it to the body of the guitar. Um, it, it, it's not quite as, as uh, vibrant or um, as detailed as what they can do now with the printer, but I was very impressed with the results at that time. Mm. So um, these, again, were Mexico models that they were making, and uh, they were very affordable, but they sounded great. I was just thrilled to, to have a project in a guitar. I thought, wow, I really need to HPL, that's the high pressure laminate um, uh, guitars. Correct. Yeah, like the Ed Sheeran model is, uh, uses that. In fact, the Ed Sheeran model has his little, um, well, they're all, he's got several, but he has mm -hmm. one that has the cross with like a green cross on it. Would that have been screen printed or is that a different technique? Uh, that I don't know. I wasn't involved mm -hmm. in that one. It's, po it's, po it's possible they use something like that. So, mm -hmm. so are Martin, were Martin the first company, and we'll show you some pictures soon to put this into context, but were Martin the first company? to start doing this or is, have, have other guitar companies done this? Like where does this idea even come from of, of putting the, of printing the artwork onto the top of the guitar? That's a good idea. I don't know the um, origins of why they started printing things on the top of, of the guitars. Mm. Um, again, these are all products from Mexico because that's the Mexico plant was building the HPL yeah. uh, guitars and, and instruments. So I don't know why they decided to, to um, do any printing at first. All I know is that they decided to do the printing of the Martin 175th because it could be reproduced and they wanted to celebrate that, that history of the guitar, the founding of the guitar, and to, to mass produce uh, an item. Uh, mm -hmm. Thankfully, they weren't asking me to, to paint 600 or, or 1,000 hand-painted guitars. I mean, that would have been <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's the thing, right? Paint, painting the guitar by hand. I've seen a lot of people do that, but I've not seen the mass-produced screen printing. I think we should show a guitar so people can see what we're talking about, because some people might not have even seen these guitars, right? Okay. So let's start. Now, have you? We've got we've got several um, guitars to go through. If anyone's seen one they want to talk about, please put it in the in the chat. And um, Robert, do you have one that you'd like to start with, or can I just choose one at random? What do you think? Well, since we're talking about the one seventy fifth, which the artwork's right here, okay. and Coffee mugs are available in my gift shop, which I actually don't have. Uh, let's talk about that one. Okay, just give me a second. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Okay. And I'll just make sure everyone can see it. Let me just switch to my desktop. Okay. Okay, everyone can see that now. So there we go. I have the I have the pictures here. I'm just going to go through to the just going to scan through to the black and white ones. Okay, so I've got the two black and white ones here. Um, I've got the one that says approved drawing, which is black and white. And I've also got oh. the one that says enlarged to 150%. So we'll start with those. I presume you start by sketching these out in black and white. Am I correct? Uh, correct. And then they're, you know, they're sort of rough drawings until I can, uh, that right there that we're looking at is the watercolor sketch of the, mm -hmm. the original concept. So this is really the first artwork that I sent up to them when they were asking about a design. And mm. I would be remiss to tell you that, you know, without Chris Martin's support and, you know, being related to him, I sometimes get a little nervous about saying that only because I would love my artwork to be valued, mm. you know, not because Chris told me to come up and work with him, but because it was, you know, on its own merits. And, um, but I believe after all this time, because so many people, you know, Chris passed me off to Dick Boak, who walked me through this whole thing. I think under Dick's um, guidance and, and Chris's support, it's been the most amazing segment of my career because, you know, just working with these, this fine company and the people that they have, they're just amazing. Mm. I feel like I'm one of the, I, the luckiest guy in, in the world sometimes. But, you know, it's a great, I, I always say, I love the history. I love the people there. And this is a nice way of, documenting it on the guitar. I think it's cool. Yes, like I exactly. can see the factory. So is that the old factory or the new factory? So what we're looking at here is the final drawing that I used as a guide to do the painting. And what yeah. you're looking at there is the North Street factory. Okay. Which had, which was really the beginnings of, mm. of the company. You know, it's, it's Mecca. There's that old building built in the 1850s that was the original factory. Yeah. And you can see how they've added on additions as the company has, yeah. has grown. Yeah. So, Yes, that's the, the lower part is the older factory, and the yeah. upper guitar is that Ma Martin Stauffer yeah. model. And you have that and in the museum, was, right? Yes, yeah. and I was so enthralled with this model, and again, the history and the, and the children's books that I'm, I'm working on, that I had my eye out for about 10 years on Martin Stauffer, which I happened to pick up 
through um, a, a collection that uh, Peter Zago was selling. And so I was lucky enough to get a coffin case and a Martin Stoffer guitar within my price range. And mm -hmm. uh, I just treasure it because you can see the workmanship in it. I wanted something with uh, CF Martin's DNA, if I could get that. Mm -hmm. And it's just a lovely little instrument. And uh, I just love the design. So I'm, it caught my eye the minute I started working on this project. And I was always looking for one. And that finally happened. I, 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 like, I like it. You've got the, you've got the writing there from, that you see inside the guitars. Mm -hmm. You've got the, the original factory. Um, Christian F. Martin, you've got the one, the first guitar that that shows the whole history on one guitar top. And I see what you mean about yeah, you've got the bridge and the sound hole and the fretboard. You have <laughs> yeah. to work around. I didn't even right. thought of that. And the way you've got the Martin logo going around the the lower bout there, yeah, um, that's a great one. I love that. Let's go into the next. Let's look at the next picture. Okay. So what's that then? The one that says enlarged to one hundred fifty percent. Is this is that this a that's different probably design? Probably some uh, preliminary drawing that I worked on mm. that I, you know, wanted to take it up to the original size of the guitar. You know, the label that's displayed in that particular drawing is uh, the first address that C.F. Martin had as far as his workshop and his uh, music store, which was 196 Hudson Street. Yeah. So um, that was another wonderful experience. When the 175th anniversary actually occurred, we as the company were all gathered down in that location by the, um, the, um, the tunnel, the, um, the lower one, not the Lincoln Tunnel. I'm hitting a, is it, tell me the name of the tunnel. Um, <laughs> I lost my mind. The Holland Tunnel. Thank you. <laughs> I should I know, right? I've been there for a while. <laughs> so we were gathered where the Holland Tunnel is, is where the building once was located. And mm. there we were on that date, I believe it was November 8th. Uh, 175 years from when C.F. Martin first landed, that we all gathered at that location. That was a pretty moving moment. So, mm. incredible. Okay, so I'll go on. We've got the colored version. Yes. And there's two of those. So again, oh, they're just different designs, right? You've got one that has the Hudson Street address, and you've got one that doesn't have the Hudson Street address. So they're just different. So, so did you use both? Did they use both of these, or just one of them? Uh, I. Until the image comes up so I can see it, I'm pretty sure that they both had the... Uh, oh, oh, the first original design probably did not because I didn't, I didn't realize at the time, um, because when I wanted to do this drawing, they did give me access to all the instruments in the museum, and I didn't see that label mm -hmm. before. But when um, I looked inside this um, beautiful, amazing guitar, uh, you know, the label just stood out. Okay, and then I see the actual guitar. That's the final version, right? Yeah, that's yes. That's I, I, I like that. That looks so great. So from that little watercolor sketch, that preliminary study that I had, that I sent up to Martin, mm. uh, this guitar was the result of that and all the work that was in there. Ah, and I think, am I right? The kind of the kind of hole at the top is as if, is it as if you were looking inside the guitar. Is that like is that the idea behind that, or is that this a, uh, is that a sound hole basically? Looks like almost. That's like, a sound hole. Yeah, it looks and like that's the hand painted version. So yes, that was yeah. thoroughly painted with acrylic paint on top of the guitar. Yeah, and when I first looked at it, it's like I'm looking at the wood inside the guitar. I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. It's very cool. Wow. So well, yeah. and that was that was a very uh, anxious time for me because they assembled the body, and I really couldn't screw this up because I couldn't go back and tell them I've wrecked your guitar. I need another body mm. because they had set aside this guitar that had a specific serial number. So there was no going back. So I had to carefully yeah. do this watercolor acrylic, very thin acrylic uh, painting on top of That's great. the guitar. So that was your first project, was it? Correct. And how many of those guitars did they make? Hmm. I don't know. I'd like to say millions, but I don't think they did that. <laughs> maybe, maybe a thousand between okay. maybe 500 and a thousand. Okay. Now, now, I'll bring this question up right away because I'm sure some people are thinking it. <sighs> is this a polarizing kind of concept to, to have this artwork on the guitar? I think I've seen around forums when these are released at NAMM, some people say, you know, I remember the, I remember the polka dogs one. People were like, well, I'm not going to buy a, a guitar with polka, the polka dogs on it. What, what, was yeah. the, what was the reception when, what, what, you know, do you remember what the initial feedback was from, from people when, you, when these were, were released? Like what, what was the thought, thoughts that you heard about this idea of putting the artwork? I mean, the artwork is great, but put, some people might struggle with the idea of putting the artwork on a guitar. What do you think? What was, what was the reception at the time when you first released these? Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, I might be in that camp 
depending on the project sometimes that I think a guitar ought to just be natural, beautiful wood with this wonderful mm -hmm. inlay. But I think in this particular um, project where we're celebrating the history of the Martin guitar in this, this historic moment, the guitar became sort of this hybrid uh, wall hanging art piece and a, and a musical instrument all at the same time. Mm. So as we were celebrating this milestone of the company, this became something more than just an image on a guitar. It was just celebrating this historic moment. And mm. people, I believe, really um, understood that meaning and were behind it and accepted it and enthusiastic about it because I got some very nice responses from a lot of people. I would agree. I, I would agree. It shouldn't be on the top. Well, I would agree that these a lot of these guitars are um, released at Summer Nam and showing appreciation and history and um, dare I say more of like a commemorative type thing, right? Correct. So Correct. I think a bit like when a bit like when people say the SC thirteen is is a different direction to the HD twenty eight. Well, it, you know we have both of them, and with the artwork, I think you should just take it as what it is. It's it's a celebration, and uh, it's like a special edition. Um, yes, so and, and importantly, it sounds like a Martin. So you know, yeah. it's not just this uh, cheap junky guitar just for artwork to hang on your wall. Right. It actually sounds beautiful, and you want to play it. Right. 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 Okay. So let's go on to another one. Let me see what I have here. I could ask our viewers to select one. I've got the the list in front of me. That's okay. I'm ready. Fire away, Ridley. Okay. Let me. Let me let, okay. I'll choose the next one. And um, everyone that's watching, you can see here the list of names I have for the files, the folders. Feel free to choose one, put it in the chat, and I'll go to that one next. Um, I'm pretty sure I know which one some people are going to go for. <laughs> All right. Does it, uh, <laughs> does it have a green leaf on it? <laughs> um, let me see. Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to choose the Brexit, aren't I? Because. Um, okay. A lot of my viewers think I'm in England. I'm actually in New York City, just so you know. So uh -huh. I'm going to choose the Brexit one. Let me just bring this up on the screen and make it. I knew bigger. you were going with that one. Well, I laughed. I saw. I went to. Uh, I miss. I missed some of them this year. I went. Was this last year or the year before? I hadn't heard about it online, and I saw it, and I just laughed. You know, I was just like, oh, you know, it's, I'm wondering what the story is. Like, you know, is is R. Martin a very political kind of company, or are they just are they just um, are they having fun? Are they marking a time in history? I didn't know quite the reason behind some of this artwork. Did you have you got any any thoughts on that? Well, sometimes it's a mystery to me too. So, uh, <laughs> just to back up a little bit, the, the one seventy fifth that we were talking about was an a HPL top, right? And sometime after that, there was talk about getting a um, inkjet printer that they were going to somehow modify and adapt to print directly on the top of a guitar uh, on a spruce top. Mm. And I realized at that point that they were buying me a toy where I could really come up with some really nifty uh, designs, use a lot of bold color, a lot of detail. And Chris Martin also, I think, loved the idea of putting images on the guitar in certain, you know, for certain reasons. This Brexit guitar is... Um, just kind of the concept that Chris came up with, because I think the original point was that this car, guitar was going to be unveiled at the Frankfurt Nam show. Mm. And Chris likes to have sort of a, a carrot, if you will, a reason for people to come into the booth and, and look around. You know, not that their guitars don't speak for themselves, but if there's something that you can talk about, you know, good or bad, this will do the trick. So, um, Chris, Chris Martin just had this idea and he threw this thing at me, you know, because this was at a time when um, the discussion was whether there was going to be a break from the EU or not. And I don't really, I have to tell you, I don't understand that. I don't understand all the implications, but Chris Martin wanted some kind of um, commentary on that. And I don't know if we had a clear idea or not, but came up with this sort of idea that, you know, we had done this if you will, the same sort of thing way back in 1776 where we broke away from England and it wasn't always pretty, but it worked out pretty well. Maybe we could come up with some kind of, you know, tongue in cheek, humorous look at this whole thing. 
And, uh, you know, I, it, it seemed to me that it was a, a deadline intensive project. And I kind of put together a real quick sketch and, you know, George Washington and some flag motif. But I wanted to bring George Washington up to date as if he was alive today. And mm. uh, he, if he looked like Carl Lagenfeld, you know, give him some glasses and some nifty headphones. And, you know, he's <laughs> he's a 21st uh, century kind of guy. So I'm going to scroll through. The, OK, so I got the initial design. But I don't know how well received this guitar was, and people were scratching their heads, and you know, a lot of back and forth. But you know, a lot of conversation happens, and so if you're talking about a product, I guess that can't all be bad, right? So yeah, so I'm showing the black and white sketch, and then the initial design, the final design, and then I'm going to show the actual guitar on the Martin website. 14 fret dreadnought art guitar is crafted with satin finished sycamore back and sides, provide clear and transparent overtones. Uh, includes Sitka, so it's a Sitka, Sitka spruce top. Okay, so we mentioned printing these on HPL, but you can also print these onto um, Sitka spruce as well, right? Well, and this is like an inkjet printer, like your home mm -hmm. printer. And we can print them depending, what makes this a really lovely uh, tool is that with an HBL top, you might have to run 100 or 500 reproductions at one time. And so you hope you're going to sell 500 guitars to pay for all of this um, material with this printed top on it. Well, mm -hmm. with, a, with this Mamaki printer, you can do a, a short run or a long run. You can do it per order. So if there are 100 orders or 200 orders, you can crank out 200. And there's really no waste of material. And... What's especially nice for people who are playing this instrument, that it's a very thin coating of ink, which doesn't affect the sound of the guitar or the quality. So you can put right. it on any guitar and it's not going to deaden the tone because it's just some micro layer of ink that's mm. on top of it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's projects important. like this, like Brexit, for me, the thrill is getting a phone call from Chris Martin and saying, I have an idea. And that kind of goes back to when we were kids, you know, some, as the older bunch in this, you know, cousin thing, we would sometimes get in trouble with really wacky ideas, right? So this is sort of a throwback to the time when Chris would, you know, hey, I have an idea, let's do this. Mm. And I'm like, okay, another guitar. I'm, you know, happy to work with you. And, and it's just fun going back and forth with sketches and hearing his opinion, say yes, no, change this. And it's just, uh, you know, for me, the real thrill is the chase rather than the finished product. I just like working with Chris, uh, getting his thoughts and putting together these sketches. We had a request for Rock the Vote guitar. Oh, so I'm, how about I'm, that? I've got the, the black Is and white. Is it David Crosby? <laughs> uh, <Is> he... <laughs> no, it's Bob Dobson. Um, <laughs> I think, I, I think, wasn't this, this was last year, yep. I think um, I was at, uh, where was I? I was at um, the guitar store here downtown. Rudy's music and Chris Martin was doing a talk and he mentioned this guitar. It wasn't released yet. He gave like a heads up to the people that were there. And right. this is this is the guitar. So I've got the black and white sketch. This looks much more intricate. Um, lots of lots of detail here. Um, that's the black and white. And I'll show us the. Let me just go through them here. Hang on. Yeah. Next one is the color version. And that's not the guitar, right? That's like the artwork. And well. then. There's the guitar top. Oh, okay. So this is the actual guitar top that's been printed, right, on this board. It's like yes. a like a like a chopping board. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So th th the black and white version that I'm looking at on your screen, because I know there's a delay. That's yeah. one of three or four versions. Mm. And this is exactly what I was talking about before. You know, uh, an August afternoon, Chris Martin gives me a call and says, "I just got off the phone with David Crosby, and we're going to do a guitar." Um, he's very interested in getting the young people out to vote and you should talk to him. So here's his phone number. Like, okay, well, call him now. Yeah, call him now. So off I go. Got a, an, into an interesting conversation with David Crosby and we were looking for sort of a quote, a tagline to put on this guitar. And he kind of came out with this, um, just a short version of democracy works if you work it. You know, there wasn't any endorsement of, of a candidate or anything, but we thought, you know, he's going to, we were hoping he was going to have maybe these concerts where he would encourage the people if they weren't registered to vote to get out there and register and maybe sign up that day. Who knows? There were plans. But of course, when the pandemic hit, I think all that changed. So we had this guitar up and ready to go. And it was going to be something that he would probably play on stage. 
and it would also be sold to those who wanted a copy through the you know through Martin. Ennis asks a question that I was about to ask myself. He says, "Can they print just one?" And I was going to say, "Have you ever been asked to? Have you ever been asked to commission like one guitar? Like maybe yeah. maybe like John Mayer wants one or one or two guitars with his his logo on it or something? Have you ever ever done that?" Well, and yes, and that's the beauty of having this printer. A fellow um, during one of the Martin events at the factory came up to me and said, "Could I commission you to do?" Uh, this scene of, um, in the Adirondacks with the Adirondack chairs and uh, a, a, just kind of a landscape with water in front and the mountains and everything. And I thought, yeah, we can do that. I asked Chris's permission if we could do that. But basically he um, ordered the guitar through Martin Guitar mm. uh, and I created this top for him and sent him images that he approved. And then they printed one for him. Okay. It was complete custom, and he loved it. It was mm. great. Um, I also did a custom for um, a charity. Uh, the second one that we did for this Native American charity, the Native American Heritage Association. So I created a custom guitar for them, a one-off that I purchased and donated um, as a way to raise funds for the Lakota Sioux um, tribal community in South Dakota. So mm. yeah, you can order. You know, if you're encouraging your viewers. And I would do that if I were you. If they want a one-off guitar, sure, absolutely. That'll keep me busy and, and Martin will make it, certainly. Yeah, I've wanted to discuss uh, custom shops on here for a while. So that's that's an option that the custom shop would, so they would do that if I called them up. If I went to my dealer and said, I want to order a custom guitar with a printed top, they would, they would put that to Martin and they might do that? I think so. Okay, that's great. That's very unique. I like that. Um, and here's the spiel from the website, the D16E. So it's actually a sycamore back and sides with a sicker top. Yes. Oh, it's a gloss top. So it can be gloss as well, not just, a, not it's just a, satin. It's a D16, you know, it's it's no different than any other D16, except it's got this image printed okay. directly on And did David Crosby receive one of these guitars? Yes, he did. Yeah, I, yes, thought, he did. I assume so. Yeah. And Ennis also says, is this special ink tantamount to oil-based stain? Um, all I make is the artwork. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What, I'd have to look into that. Okay. 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 Awesome. All right. Next guitar. Do we have any requests from the viewers? I'm going to show this, show them on the screen here. And if not, I'm going to choose one. I'll give you a few seconds to see that on the screen and I'm going to choose one myself. You know, to choose this David Crosby guitar, <laughs> I, you know, just to talk about that while somebody's selecting yeah. um, one, it's a daunting experience to do a portrait of a, a relatively famous and influential person yeah, I'm sure. and then have them approve it. And, you know, I've done work. Most, most portrait artists probably are told, no, that doesn't look like me or you, you need to make this different or something like that. But David was great. He thought, you know, <laughs> that would do a good job. He follows me on Instagram. So every time I post a guitar like this of him on Instagram, he's always liking it. So it, it was pretty, very, just a crazy experience, but a wonderful experience and just a fabulous time dealing with that, you know, a music legend and creating a guitar that I would hope that would speak and resonate, resonate to people who should be getting out there and vote in the next coming election. Yeah, don't, don't paint someone who's very vain. They might say, can you make me look thinner and more handsome? You know, that's, that's <laughs> <what>. <laughs> Uh, all right, it's, it's, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I want someone to choose one. Um, and then while, while I'm, I'm get, I've got one more question while I'm waiting here. So, so Chris Martin, when he was on, mentioned he would have, he mentioned that he would have a, um, uh, a guitar coming up for his birthday, I think. Do you have any information on that? And is that going to be with a printed top or not? Uh, I have not asked to, to do that project, so I okay. don't. So it might not Unfortunately, be. Unfortunately, they don't run every project past me. Okay. Okay. We do have one in the works, Chris Martin and I do that that are, is going to come out. I'm not allowed to talk about it, but um, I think so far it has um, received from in, in within the factory just an awful lot of um, praise uh, for what we're doing, and I think it's going to make an impact uh, at some point, probably in the fall when it's released. 
Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure things are slowed down a bit now. Okay. I had a question. Someone mentioned a Woodstock guitar. I'll show the Woodstock guitar on the screen. And they say, where did the idea for the Woodstock guitar come from? So just the, the iconic poster that was um, produced in 1969. Uh, basically, uh, I mean, what more do you need to say? We, I took the, uh, the design from that poster with the bird and the head sock and the, and the fingerboard and, and that beautiful dove. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it was more than, more than that. Actually, we were working on a, um, a 1967 summer of love guitar. This was one of Chris's ideas and it was a crazy kind of guitar because I was trying to throw as much of that summer of love imagery into this guitar. And it wasn't just really working out right. And, Time was passing and we couldn't get it done right. Mm. And um, a fellow that works at the factory, John McElroy, suggested, why don't you do a 1969 Woodstock guitar? You have a lot of the same images and we'll do that. And that started a conversation about, yes, 1969, 50th anniversary, all of that, come up with a design for Woodstock. And he reached out to a number of the, the original fellows who put the, con the concert together. Um, mm and got their approval to pr pursue this. So being that we had them on board, I thought, well, let's just do the iconic poster imagery and arrange that again on a guitar that makes sense sideways while you're playing it. And um, the original poster simply had three days of peace and music, but the movie poster had this additional line and love. So I thought com combining all of that would probably make the most sense and uh, just speaks of that long weekend where everybody got together for that piece, music and love. Mm. Yeah, actually, I, I see. I'm, I'm going I'm to get in trouble again for saying this. I hadn't seen that poster before. I'm just going to show it on the screen. Oh. I'm not from. <laughs> I know I'm bad, right, for a music YouTuber. There's there's the artwork there on the original poster. It's not showing very well on my camera, but that's the original poster. So so you basically took that artwork from the original poster and put it on the guitar. So hang on, can you do that? Is that, because that what that picture on the guitar is the original artwork from the poster. Is there no like um, copyright? Are you allowed to just to put an a, a image that already exists onto a guitar? Well, that's a good question for the <laughs> our legal staff because it's there and we were working with the original founders. So I imagine we had some permission. I mean, Martin mm. does, and, and part of that summer of love imagery that we were doing for 1967 was put past the legal team. And they looked at it and said, this is really a copyright nightmare because, you know, you're grabbing images, even though you're going to translate them with paint and watercolor and pencil. Yeah, this is going to require an awful lot of legal work. So mm. they went, you know, they do their due diligence and oh, they make sure that okay. everything is, is covered. So this uh, is an official, this, this was in collaboration with Woodstock? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Forgive me. And there was going to be a 50th concert, but, you know, somehow, somewhere... Uh, the, the rock gods were not with them this year or last year, and it never c came off. Who knows? It's amazing the first one did, I guess. Mm. So, and this particular guitar is is back to being printed on HPL. Yeah, it's a yeah. it's different than the Mamaki printed guitar. I do. When, I remember seeing this one, and I'm sure this is even more polarizing for some people because of the bright colors and everything. You know, <laughs> it's very in your face, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but the poster was too. <laughs> uh, let me see what they're saying here. Cindy says, it would be neat to do a Willie Nelson, use the look of his guitar top as the background for the commemorative. There is a Willie Nelson guitar, isn't there? I think they recreated uh, Trigger. Yeah. I, no, I mean artwork. Is, 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 um, is Willie Nelson on an artwork? I'm not sure. Um, not that I... And... Um, Case in point, when you're you're bringing in a third party like a Willie Nelson or like a Johnny Cash or just mm. name somebody who wants their image on a guitar, you just can't paint it and put it up for sale. You need to go through the process of having Willie approve uh, the guitar and you know work within his corporation or company or his people, and it all has to come together. Um, it unfortunately you just can't slap somebody's face that you admire. Onto a guitar. 
Oh and yeah, of course. Run them off. Yeah, you're taking. So it becomes a process. Like, you're taking their likeness. Willie Nelson would have to come to Martin and say, "I want to do a guitar with my face on it." Um, yes. I imagine some artists don't even want their face on a guitar. They might want another symbol or something. So yeah, it's, I'm sure. It's, well, exactly right. And, yeah. and what you might want the young Willie versus the Willie of today, and you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. Dick Bo, you know, did an amazing amount of si of artist signature series. So he mm -hmm. often worked with artists who played Martin guitars, and then he would donate, um, I guess, proceeds, or I don't know how they worked it, but a charity was also involved, probably to the, the musician's uh, charity. Mm. So an awful lot of money was raised through the sales of these guitars that also benefited the musician's charity. So that was really a nice, mm. kind of a nice endeavor. Um, Marco says, there's a fishing one. Can we talk about that one? Fishing, let me see what we got there. I, not, I don't have that. I didn't design that, but I think there is a fly fishing guitar. Yes, there is a fly fishing. That was yep. done by a different artist, yep. Willie Matthews, and that was done. Um, I was not involved with that guitar. So I thought the we I thought the weed one was the Willie Nelson. <laughs> well, I should have sent you the photo of Willie actually playing it. It was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, he did. That's what I thought. Yeah. Sorry, Willie. Um, <laughs> Well. I'm, not, I'm not surmising anything here. Let me show that one. Okay, so we've got the the, the black and white there. Um, I've it's but, another, so another another political one. Okay. Well, curiously, the uh, viewer that mentioned the uh, fly fishing guitar mm. obviously must be a fly fisherman or something. But what are his thoughts about having imagery of fly fishing on a guitar? Is it good? Bad? I don't know. Marco, what do you think about flight? Is, is there a reason why you requested the fishing one? Are you a, are you a fisherman? And uh, is, there, is there a reason why you like that? <laughs> I, I really like the colors on this one. They're so vibrant and kind of 70s. Yeah, well, you've got the 70s um, um, artwork on there, of course, and the license plate. Yeah, this one looks really, looks really cool. Again, you know, I would, would, I, would I play a guitar with this printed on? I mean, I might own a guitar with this printed on on the wall. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. I think it's just a cool concept. And um, if you're into art more than me, I'm sure this would appeal, but um, yeah. Well, there's, a, there's always a backstory to these guitars. Okay, so what's the backstory to this one? Well, this is another one that Chris called me up and said, you know, Nam is going to be in Anaheim and there is a vote in California in November um, regarding the passage of, um, I guess, recreational use marijuana. And if it passes, we should have a guitar ready to go uh, that celebrates the fact that people, again, average American citizens voted on, on an issue that they feel strongly about. It's not so much an endorsement of pot, but rather endorsing the fact that we as Americans can vote, you know, and change things up if we need to. Mm. So Chris said, get a design ready, but don't do anything until the vote. So wow. here's, you know, I'm cranking out these designs. We were talking about something. Um, he had the impression or, or the suggestion that we could do something Hollywood and weed, uh, Hollyweed and wine was the original concept. Uh, but lo and behold, there's a copyright on Hollyweed, you know, where they take that Hollywood sign in, in Beverly Hills. And instead of the O's, they've made them into lowercase E's and it says Hollyweed and you know, there's all sorts of legal things going on here, so we can't use that. But he said, mm -hmm. come up with something. So um, I had some imagery, again, that was going to just drive the legal team crazy. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I changed some things. I, I uh, remember receiving kid, uh, postcards as a kid. So I wanted to do this postcard sort of motif at the lower part of the guitar that you see. Uh, hi from California. So the play on words is hi. I had my son, he didn't have a joint, but I had him uh, make a, a, a fake joint and used him as a model, lighting up so I could uh, draw that within the letters. And we used the California bear because it's symbolic of the California fl uh, flag and a mm. license plate that says weed and just grabbed a whole bunch of imagery that could not um, create a, a nightmare for uh, copyright uh, lawsuits. And so when the, uh, when the vote passed, there was all of a sudden this uh, crazy deadline to get this guitar created, printed, and manufactured in weeks, really, and shipped out to Anaheim. Mm. And as it turns out, um, 
At the time, there was a, sh a show going to be aired called Disjointed. They were filming this show with Kathy Bates as a, uh, as a character on there who ran a uh, metal, uh, marijuana dispensary in California. And I think her name was um, Ruth Whitefeather, maybe not, um, can't recall. But anyway, she got wind of this guitar and wanted the guitar for her show. She apparently plays guitar. And so the last episode of Disjointed, they were gathered out, the characters were ga gathered around her while she whips out this uh, uh, D420 and plays this amazing instrument on uh, Disjointed, which is kind of like, that's a very cool endorsement. The other thing that you probably should know about, the backstory about the D D420, is that 420 um, was an expression that was used, the original, the origin of the story, it's an expression that was used by high school kids when they wanted to sneak off and go smoke pot, they'd look at their clock, their watch and go, it's 420. It's not some kind of police jargon for, you know, there's a bust of pot or anything like that. Um, it was just a group of high school students that kind of invented this slogan, 420. And not long after the guitar was made, one of these kids who went on, they went under the name of the Waldos. Uh, he's not a kid anymore. Obviously he's a grown adult contacted the company and said, I just want you to know we were, we were one of that original group that came up with this slogan 420. And, uh, we really like the guitar. So hmm. you never know what you're going to get feedback from folks. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, with, with, with any kind of art, right? Same with, with writing a song or something like that. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, I'm sure that, um, I'm sure when that came out, people were talking. <laughs> well, people were talking and there was a group that loved it and a group that didn't. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting at. And I get it, you know, I mean, I mean, t to me, artwork is kind of polarizing anyway, let alone when you print it onto a guitar, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially a Martin guitar. Because a, sure. lot, a lot of us are traditional. I mean, I've got my dreadnought behind me has a colorway. And some, mm -hmm. people, some people find that to be, um, to be polarizing, you know? Well, right. And again, <laughs> I mean, the significance of this guitar is that when you're going to a trade show, you want to have something that's going to attract attention, publicity, you know, be the talk of the show, right? To mm -hmm. get as much attention as you can to your product. And this guitar in particular certainly did that that now, year. Now, this is a guitar that I, again, that I saw for sure. And I'm going to put this one on. This is the, this is the, the one with, the, this, this, this one had the watch as well, right? With all the, yeah, all the inlay and everything. Yeah. Let's find this one here. It's the D45. Is, that's the two, is that the two millionth guitar? That's, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So I remember seeing this when I went to the factory. That's how I know mm. this guitar. And so what is that? That's, that's not printed, is it? Isn't that, what is that on the guitar? Right. Well, uh, I think the project was two or three years in the making. And um, I did the preliminary, just the sketches, just as guides for the people who were going to construct this monster of a guitar. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the original idea was that there was a watch company in Pennsylvania that, um, the significant watch company uh, that, um, makes their own movements, which is really rare for movements to be made in the United States, I, I think other than Switzerland. And so there was this collaboration of, um, artistry from both the watch company and Martin guitar. And... What my sketch did was really show the folks who were going to build this, that this is the placement of all of the watch parts. At first, truthfully, at first I thought when I had this project, I'm going to be designing a watch. As it turns out, that's not true. But um, this, the company RGM Watches was going to supply us a watch, and we were going to try to recreate this watch face and back on a guitar, right. and also the, somebody came up with a clever idea of installing it in a head, the headstock where you could actually wind it, you know, so it'd be a <laughs> watch. Wow. So, you know, the tuning gears on the watch became like watch stems. Yeah. And so all of these car, uh, parts were cut out and attached to the guitar, and then a coating of acrylic was poured over it. I think the guitar weighs like 
eight pounds. Wow. It's a heavy guitar. <laughs> it sounds great, but it's one of a kind. And I think it's one of the most expensive uh, guitars, if not certainly a Martin guitar. Most expensive Martin, if not the guitar ever produced. So, it took that long. so a lot of the reasons why the guitars are expensive, like the D45 is more expensive, is the inlay, right? And this guitar has a ton of Correct. inlay, which is going to add, uh, inlay adds a lot to the price of a guitar. But I was, I was going to say, I presume, and you know, I don't know, I haven't played it. I would presume as a guitar person, this doesn't sound that good, simply because there's so much weight on the top of the guitar and the sound hole is kind of partially blocked. So... I mean, I don't know. These things are all subjective, but I, well, would, I would assume this guitar would... I mean, the word good is subjective, but I would imagine that stuff kind of weighs down the tone, doesn't it? It sounded really good. Really? I, well, yeah. when, I come, Tim, when I come to the museum, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the question then. Please <laughs> do. Well, well, and Tim Teal was one of the fellows heading this whole thing ah, up. So okay. his team okay. went to great lengths. There were so many... Um, I imagine there were three or four prototypes that they were making to get all of this stuff to work and look good. I mean, not only that, but more importantly, it had to sound good because you know, people are going to pick it up. Yeah. And if it has a lot of tone to it, hmm. um, I'm sure the average person wouldn't hear much difference. You would probably hear a great deal of difference from just a D45 to this one, but there's no mistaking that it's Martin. It's well, well, sound. well, I just have to say, let's not forget that I'm the person that reviews pickups and I listen to hear if the pickup changes the tone of the guitar. So I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm super into that kind of stuff. But I mean, I would, I would never buy, I would not look, well, I wouldn't look to buying a guitar like this to record with. Again, I, I see this more as a work of art, but I would be interested to know what it sounds like, especially if Tim Teal was involved because he is a genius after all. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll reserve judgment until I come to the factory next time and I'll give it a play and then I'll update the viewers when I've played it. But uh, well, it's certainly very interesting. Absolutely. And yes, this was the one off, but they did wind up producing a lesser, when I say lesser, lesser inlaid version hmm. for, and you got to watch for, I think for $150,000. So <laughs> yeah, I have that one. I have that. They one. sold a bunch. <laughs> I have two of them. I usually get prototypes, but I didn't got that one. I just want the watch. It's, it's funny how watches are very prevalent in guitars. So so the John Mayer guitar that I'm always talking about, and, and, and Dick was talking about it with me, Dick Boak, he said that the, the graphic there was taken from John Mayer's watch. So uh -oh. watches and guitars often do come together. It's interesting, isn't it? How these yes, things it tie up. Yes. Yeah, I remember that guitar very well. Well, okay. and it's the Pennsylvania connection, really. Right, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just go through what, what I've missed then. So um, that's that one, isn't it, that I just showed? Yep. We've done the 175th, done the Brexit. Okay, let's look at the Butterfly and Cherry. We'll just go through all of them. Okay, so Butterfly and Cherry. I, had, I don't remember this one. What year was this? Well, the deal with this one was the custom shop... Um you know, whenever I go to the factory and wander the aisles and saying hello to friends and colleagues that are working on the factory floor, somebody came up to me and said, you know, Robert, we, on the tour route, there is a space, there, there are boards that you come to that kind of shows you how sometimes the bracing would go together or the back goes together. There are these demo, uh, like demonstration boards. And the custom shop had one that was completely empty. And somebody asked me, you know, would you mind coming up with maybe a design? We'll make a one-off custom and we'll hang it up for people to see, you know, mm. some show off our talents. So, um, you know, I put together just this really basic design of a butterfly on the, on the top of a guitar and some cherry, um, cherry blossoms running up the fingerboard mm. and maybe the butterflies in the headstock and some clouds and things like that. And Aaron Van Wy, who was um, really responsible for the guitar at that time, really went to town. Oh my gosh, he really inlaid the, uh, the headstock. It was just amazing. And people were going, well, you know, who's going to want this guitar? What if somebody wants it? You know, what do we do with it? And lo and behold, somebody did purchase the guitar when they saw it on the, on the tour route. Wow. So it was a one-off, never to be created again. Now, now I've got to say, like, this, w without the printing and with the art more in the fretboard and just the graphic well, on the that's lower back. That's all hand laid, inlaid. Right, no, I, no, I, no on it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But I, I was just going to say, I feel like this is more of a... Like, like I could see this being an artist model or something. 
This, this, yes. this to me is, is something that, that a singer-songwriter might order and play on stage because it's, it's more understated on the body, but the inlay on the neck, which people often do, is, 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 very, is very beautiful. So I can imagine this being like an artist model. Yes. Yeah, it didn't really go any further than the one-off. Hmm. Yeah, but I can imagine that being commissioned. Again, there's a lot of work on that inlay, and I'm guessing that adds a lot of money to the price, right? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. And, you know, inlay around the rosette, too, because they're all little butterflies flying around the sound hole. Oh, I, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I just noticed that. Yeah, I re that might be my favorite one in a way. As, again, you know, as, as someone who's more of a purist, I can see them appreciating that because you still get the natural wood, but then you've got the ornamentation on the neck and just on the body. Yes, and truthfully, I really loved working on that guitar, and I was hoping that, you know, maybe that would lead to other work from the custom shop. Right. And uh, at least from my standpoint, I mean, they do some wonderful inlay work on an awful lot of great quality guitars, but they haven't asked me to design many of those at all. Someone said, reminds me of Hearts, Dog, and Butterfly. That's an album, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Butterfly, of course, yeah. So, yeah, I can imagine that being a... I can imagine that, yeah, I'm surprised the custom shop haven't done more stuff like that. That, that would be very obvious to me, but hmm, there we go. So let me go on to the next one. I like that one a lot. Uh, I was really pleased with it. I thought it turned out really beautifully. The D, yeah, that's, that's a great one. The DXMAE 30th Anniversary. Okay, so let me see what this one is. I, I haven't looked at these in too much detail because I want, it to be, I want them to be new to me as well as we look at them. So... Oh, we've got the, the, the eagle and the snake on this one. Um, Correct. Oh, that was 2019. I think I remember this one. Yeah. Um, uh, honors these employees and features elements of Mexican national symbols. Okay. So let me go yes. to the... Let me, okay, so there's the black and white, the eagle one. And, and this, uh, this was a celebration of the Navajoa factory that Martin has in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. And so they were celebrating the fact that they had had his factory for 30 years already. Yeah. And some of that imagery is taken from the Mexican flag. Mm. So uh, the story behind that I, I, mm. is this imagery came from a vision as far as the eagle swooping down and, and uh, getting the snake. Mm. And um, I guess the, the eagle landed on a cactus. So this cactus motif, some of the... Uh, the leaves, the laurel around the edge are all part of this vision. And so to honor, you know, the Mexican plant and, and their heritage in Mexico, we thought, well, let's let's take some of the symbolism from the flag and put it in on top of a guitar. So this is this is not an, a, um, a Mamaki printed top, but an HPL top. OK. And it did really well. And apparently the uh, snake and the eagle is sort of a common imagery of an awful lot of cultures and i think the um see if that focuses i just yeah. i just googled the flag and that's what you see uh -huh. inspired by that yeah right so i took that as the uh, sort of the symbolism and kind of embellished it a bit to fit it on a guitar because <laughs> mm. there's that bridge again right in the yeah. middle of my artwork yeah <laughs> what but, is the yeah. what's that on the headstock the circular icon uh, again, that was just a logo to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Navajo plant. Okay. So, awesome. and I think that area um, is also known for um, wheat fields hmm. and grain. So, again, we honored that by putting some of that uh, imagery on top of the guitar. Yeah, and, and they're doing great things there. That's where they're building a lot of guitars now. That's where they're building the um, SC13E. So. And the strings as well, right? So that, yes, that's and you know, really it's good. not just uh, HPL HPL guitars. I think they're going to solid uh, wood guitar construction. You know, and I, at least I always hear because you know, when you talk to people, oh, the you know, plant in Mexico, the quality is not the same. But that is not true. They have people who have been trained by Martin staff, overseen by Martin staff making Martin guitars, and they're no different than the guitars that mm. are made as far as quality goes. They're no different than the guitars made in, in Nazareth. Mm. You know, there's strict uh, guidelines for making a Martin guitar, and they're adhered to down there. They do a wonderful job. Mm. Um, 
their quality of life is, is improved because they work in this factory and they're making, uh, I guess for that area, they're making, you know, a good amount of money. Yeah. And most of the people are very happy to be working there because it's improved their life so much. And they, I don't, I, they have several hundred people working down there and they not just don't make strings. They're making really quality guitars. Yeah. Well, the, string, the strings are awesome. And the reviews I've seen from regular people just on the forums of the SC 13 are saying they're great instruments. So um, yes. they're doing a great job. Um, I'm going to move on because we've been going for an hour now. I'm going to move on to your work in the museum. Okay. So I've loaded up the stage um, picture with the, with the rug and the brick wall. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that in a second. Now, I haven't seen this in person yet because it's been a while since I've been to the factory. Hopefully, I can come soon. But I remember I remember, I see this a lot on the Facebook. Like when Martin do live stream concerts, they feature yes. this. They do it on this stage. This isn't the stage. This is actually a model that you made to show what right. the stage would look like right before you built it. So that's, correct. <laughs> that's why the person looks a bit, uh, a bit fake. There. <laughs> right. um, and there's another one there. Again, with that rug and the guitars. I like the brick wall and the wood wall. <laughs> and then there's the actual stage with a performer right there. It was great. So one of my jobs that evolved because of my uh, being up there all the time and um, came about designing some of the museum space. Dick Boke in invited me to come up and uh, work on a couple projects. But then as Dick was retiring, they needed somebody to take over that role of, as far as doing some... Uh, display designs. And um, I put together these display designs in a 3D scale model. You know, it's only maybe 18 inches, 12 inches, something like that, just to see what it would look like by, whole, you know, I have one, right? I brought one here with me. It's small, oh. but I make them so that, that I can act like I'm visiting it and look in and see how it's all going to work mm. before we start putting in the display for real. So, so how, 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 do you make, how do you make that? How do you make that physically? Well, I hire very small people and they start <laughs> making guitars just like, the, actually, you know, I, I construct everything to scale. This is actually the, the original size of a, of a D28. Um, I had a top and a bridge, but I just put out these little tiny guitars and all this contraption in here, glue it in. But it saves a lot of time because I'm planning it out at this stage rather than opening these glass doors to the museum saying this works, this doesn't work, and, and making a lot of bad decisions on premises. It's right. better to work them out in these small things. So the stage is a result of doing a scale model. They were eliminating a small workbench area that um, if you've been to the museum, yep, I know. they have one that um, is around the 1850 era. Mm. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, space. And they had a sort of a repeat of that in the 60s. And Martin was looking to do these in museum sessions, these with performing artists. And they felt, well, a stage is going to be appropriate there. So I was invited to, to put together this stage space. And I chose brick and some uh, whitewash, like shiplap, to be reminiscent of the old factory. And um, this rug design, <laughs> you're going to mention the rug. So I grabbed yeah. just a page I want to I want, I want to tell the story of the rug. Okay. So, so I went to Music Zoo. They have a they have a Martin the room, a Taylor room, etc. And they have that rug. Then I, a friend was visiting from England. So the same week I went to Rudy's Music. They had a, they have a museum. Uh, sorry, a, a room the same. They have a Taylor room, a Santa Cruz room, whatever. A Martin room upstairs, which is beautiful. They have that rug. I thought, oh, <laughs> a, I thought that's a coincidence. Then I went to for some reason I was in Jersey and we went to a guitar center there. And they also now have a Martin display. So it seems to me this is actually interesting. A lot of companies now are putting displays into stores to, uh -huh. to, to really show off, rather than just have them hanging up on the wall, the guitars on the wall. They're actually putting displays now into stores, which is a great idea. And they're also hiring people that know about the guitars, which is also a great idea. But yeah. they also had that rug. And I said to the guy, where do you get that rug from? I said, I want to get a Martin rug as well. And uh, he said, oh, I don't know. And actually, I saw the lady who does the marketing at, at that Rudy's event I went to. And I, I, I wanted to ask her, but I thought, no, I'll sound, I'll sound too crazy if I start talking about rugs. Um, so I, I Googled it and I found a rug. Actually, I might, I might buy one and put it in this room, but I don't, I don't you know, I talk about all guitars. I don't, I, I don't want to become a complete um, fanboy here. But I just, <laughs> I, I thought, I just thought to myself, I wonder, and this is just a silly thing I think myself sometimes when I'm bored. But I thought to myself, I wonder if marketing sat down and said, like, like with your model, 
I wonder if they sat down and made a scale model of the display room at each music store and said, we need a red rug that looks a certain way and found it on the, on the web. Or if someone at Martin just found 50 rugs on Amazon half price and bought them. That's the kind of things that run through my mind sometimes. <laughs> I don't know that answer. All I know is that when I was putting together the model, I needed a, a image of a, of a, you know, a rug and grab that off the internet, cut it out. It's, you know, it's on paper and stuck it on there. And as we were doing the ins uh, installation of this museum, um, we realized, well, we need a rug there. And in the picking parlor up of the factory, they had this great rug, which kind of uh. matched my design and I rolled it up then and there and brought it into the museum and it's been there ever since. But um, since they're doing these displays, maybe they felt like the rug in the museum is really appropriate and we were going to order a whole bunch for the, uh, the in-store models. I, I, it would make total sense because if you go from Rudy's to Guitar Center, you, it, you see the same rug, it, it, it will be in your mind, it will. So it's, it's a oh. good branding thing if I'm right, but I, you know, maybe one day someone will tell me when I'm the next NAMM show or something. Well, and if you're a big fan of the Big Lebowski, it certainly ties the room together. Oh, it's great. No, it's great. And, and even the color, doesn't it? Because you've got the, the colors yep. of the rug with the brick and the guitar colors there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and I love, the, I love the imagery of the old posters, the James Brown poster. I love, I love those old posters. I have some like that from a movie. They look really well, cool. Well, I, I was hoping they would you know, find a place for something like that. If you notice, the little, uh, there's a little phone um, emblem up above the, the door. And uh, I oh, wanted yeah. to pay uh, homage to my father, who was a phone guy. So we, mm -hmm. had, uh, we had this fellow purchase one of those antique signs and screwed up on the, on the back of the, the display, which right. I thought nice and touching. Right. No, I love it. It looks great. I'm sure it must be great to play there um, on that. It, on that it's a screen. great place to play, and the sound yeah. is really beautiful. We've had so much positive feedback. And the other, the other thing that we were trying to encourage is that when people are visiting the factory, that they are allowed to get up on stage oh. and they are allowed to sit down with on a bench and grab a guitar model that's there and sit down and play and record yourself and put it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever wow. you want. Oh, I see. We didn't, I didn't know that. You need to make so, that. So, yeah, you're you need, not, we're encouraging everybody to get on the stage. Not, need, it's not just for the performance and not for uh, recordings through Martin. We hope that young people will actually, you know, get a sense of this is what it feels like to perform. You need to tell people that. That be okay. Here's a question: Are the public allowed? When, when obviously when the museum's open, are the public allowed to come in? Um, I'll, I'll be blunt. Can the public come in, choose a, any guitar from the museum, sit on the stage, and film themselves playing on it, or are there, are there certain restrictions on on playing the actual guitars in the museum? Yeah, you just can't grab them out of the display cases. I, you know, there's a couple guitars I think in place on the stage that you're more than welcome to play. Okay. Uh, just for recording purposes. Also, when you're in the in the factory and the and the um, visitor center, you know there's walls of guitars that are up there that you can play. They don't. I don't think they want you to take them from that visitor center area and bring them into the museum. Right. But um, you can certainly play whatever guitar you want. It's just the ones behind the glass cases are going to stay there unless okay. your name is John Mayer or Willie okay. Nelson. And well, you could probably play any guitar. I know. I'm hoping in the future, you know, when things get get back to to normal, I, hate, I don't they say normal, the new normal, whatever it's going to be. Um, I hope I can come there and we'll do like a private session and just go through some guitars and talk about them. And then I would ask you that because I, I always tell the viewers I briefly owned the OM28 John Mayer guitar and I never made a video with it, which was stupid because those videos get lots of views. Um, sure. But you have the prototype there, so that'd be great oh. to be great to to show that. And perhaps we could do some filming at some point in the future. That'd be great. But uh, yeah, it's cool to know that you can sit on that stage and play and and put the phone there and and film yourself. Yes. That's a nice touch. When the, when the museum's open again, I mean, I would encourage everybody to go do that. You know, it's a lot of fun. Just grab a guitar and play. Mm. Get a feel for it. Even if you're not a really good player, just to sit there in the presence of that museum and, and hear yourself on stage is just an amazing yeah. experience. When yeah. the museum opens, I don't know. Probably 2021. Yeah. Yeah, but what a great place. I've been there several times. Um, I actually picked up a guitar years ago and some, I can't remember the guy's name. He actually showed me it was just me and him showed me the museum. And um, I, remember, I remember back then I said, you, you might know who I'm talking about. I said, I said, I have a big interest in pickups. Do you have any guitar pickups? He said that he created one of the first undersaddle pickups. Do you, know, do you know who I'm talking about? No. 
Someone, someone at work. It, it was, it was, an, it wasn't, it wasn't a random person. It was someone that works at Martin's. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I will, I'm I will. Asking about pickups, I'm, and I told you they have a, quite a, an amazing amount of early pickups that were mm. being put in guitars at the time. That you know, if you, if that's your thing, yep. the museum has a lot to offer. I yep. would encourage anybody when it's open to go up, and it's not just all about guitars, but it's about yep. American history, history. And yep. stuff, early New York history. It's just yep. incredible. Yep. No, I love it. I told you, I always find it rather overwhelming because there's so much history. But that's just yeah. a good reason to go back several times. And yeah, I hope I hope we can do some some stuff there in the future. Let me well, see what other photos we have from there. I have. If a... you think it's overwhelming, think of the person that has to dust all that stuff. Oh, you dust it? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not you though, right? <laughs> no, but I would if they asked. Uh, this one is the D28 display. So this is all D28s, right? Uh, correct. Oh, there they are. Wow. The evolution of the D28 oh, was wow. one of the displays that I was first invited to um, to design after Dick left. All right. So are you like, are, are you now like the head of the museum? What's, what's, your, what's, what's your actual role in the museum? Are you in charge of the museum, basically? Uh, I'm not in charge of the museum, but I work with a fellow, Jason Honor, who is sort of in charge of the museum and the archives. Mm. Um, I'm the museum designer, I guess. That's my title. I design the display cases and the exhibits. So I'm brought on board and uh, I put together these little models and lay out a museum display. This is in awesome. This, picture, this is awesome. In, in the picture that you're looking at, it was the original title was the evolution of the D28. Yeah. How the D28 that we know today started out in, in life. And evolution... The word evolution spoke to me because I was thinking of, um, you, you know, dinosaur bones and fossils. And I created these like fossil rock back panels that the guitars were attached to. So there might mm. be a close up picture. I was in my basement. I was laying out these giant panels with this uh, with this uh, spackle solution and sand and rocks and pushing guitar parts in and, and leaving fossil kind of imprints. And it was getting to be a really crazy and heavy project. These backing boards were like, <laughs> I probably had, I don't know, 20, 25 pounds worth of mud in them. Mm. So, so I'm, I'm just curious though, that guitar on the left, so that's a, that's a D28. Mm -hmm. So the D28 really changed shape over the years. I didn't know that. Yes. I didn't know the D28 looked like that in the beginning. So it's really, it really had, the actual shape was not, what, what we know now as a D28 is not what the D28s used to look like. They really have changed over time. Well, I think it started out as a Ditson model. Right. It might have started as a D1 originally. Right. right. And it wasn't, you know, long after that. Um, oh, that one there. <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with all of the, I'm, my job is to design the display, so I'm not familiar with mm. why all of these models were chosen as far as their historic significance and how it all tied in together with it. D28. Oh, so that might that one on the left might not be a D twenty eight. It's just showing the evolution of the instrument. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to ask um, Spoon or someone about that. But um, right. I, I need to ask you: Why is there a, a Star Trek TV museum, and why is there a picture of Megan and Harry on the on the display? Well, because it's a timeline. So we, what oh. we were trying to do, and was very okay. cool, was okay. we were trying to put in artifacts that when you looked at the guitar you could sort of get a sense of when this guitar was being developed and sold through the uh, artifacts that were located within the, in that display case. Um, also, what was very cool, and not my idea, but they hung price tags on the, on the guitars mm -hmm. of the original prices when you bought them. Yeah. So if the, the one bought in 1938 was you know, 100 bucks, or in 1850 was 70, uh, 23 or something, it gave people a sense of what the cost the guitars were. Hundred dollars, yeah. What happened in history around that time? Yeah, I just saw a tag that said it says it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. O twenty eight. Okay, so those guitars on the left are not D twenty eights. That it's just showing the evo the evolution of the guitar in general. Okay. Right. I don't. I don't get in trouble from my my viewers saying I don't know my Martin history. I'm still learning. I'm I'm still learning from Spoon and Dick and you guys about all the history. But yeah, that's the that's the the O twenty eight there. So it just shows the evolution. Yes. The ones on the right side are all D28s, and they have changed over time. Now we, we now have the Reimagined series, which I absolutely love. 
I love yes. the, I love the reimagined guitars. They're so great. Okay, let me just see if I got any more here, then I'll go to the chat. Oh, the string display. I'll just show that quickly. I like okay. this one a lot. So I've got the the small version that you the the scale right. version that you did. Yep. Yeah, and the four. I haven't seen this again. I haven't been to the factory lately, so I haven't seen this. This looks awesome. I love all the fret. Are they real fretboards? Yes, and Aaron, I haven't seen it either, except I went finally up last ah. week and they allowed me in, but we were installing it around the time that everything shut down. Right, so, so this is brand Yes, new. these were fretboards that were going to be discarded for various reasons, whether there was a, an imperfect mark somewhere on them or that the limited editions that they were made for are no longer being made. Mm. And so I thought maybe to repurpose these and create a real... Um, interesting backdrop for the guitars to hang on and more importantly for the string packages that are brightly colored mm. to kind of elevate off of that we would use this uh, fretboard motif yeah and so i mean i had i think over 160 different fretboards that i was cleaning and making uh, almost like a puzzle uh, put, putting together a puzzle so that they would match and run up and down and, and look really elegant next to each other yeah, no, I, I like Martin Strings a lot, and that's a, I like that display. It looks really, it's very visually striking. I, I, I look forward to seeing that one in person. And then we can start wrapping up soon. I'll just come to the, the chat to, to wrap up, but I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything here. I've got the, I've got some of your, um, some of your artwork here with the rocket to the moon. Oh, thank you. And then who's that? Who's that playing the guitar with the capo on the fourth fret? Um, I'm waiting for the image to come up. So, with the red background. Hmm. I'm going to wait for the image. <laughs> oh yeah, we have we have a 30 second delay, everyone. <laughs> yes, we do. So you know the thing with I really love working in the museum and coming up with designs, and uh, it's just a sad thing to know that it's shut down and and people can't go mm. to to check out this beautiful museum. Oh, so there's John Mayer. Please. Right. I I knew it was John Mayer, but I didn't want to say it in case it wasn't. <laughs> Because that's one of his artist models as well. I yeah. forgot, you know, <laughs> I sent you over a hundred images, so I forgot exactly yeah, I what know. I know. you're mentioning backdrops. I, I don't know. know. I, I, I was too afraid to say anything. Um, Seasons of the Circle, <laughs> Native American Year. So, you know, the, the thing was, before I worked at Martin as a freelance artist, I was doing an awful lot of artwork similar to what you're seeing, book illustrations, uh, worked for some amazing companies. I actually was part of the NASA artist program and they sent me to Edwards Air Force Base to uh, to paint one of their experimental planes. So it was a very cool uh, career up until Martin, which just was like the exclamation point on, on the work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'll stay there as long as I can. I just love working with that company. Yeah, I'm sure. So I think I covered everything. So let me come back to here again. So that was really interesting. I, I think this is interesting because you know, I've been to the factory so many times, I've seen these guitars, but I didn't know about you. I didn't know the reason behind it. I love, I love the way these interviews have all come together with all you guys to actually put everything into, um, in, into view, you know, like, like the work that Dick, did, Dick and Chris did with the museum, and now you're doing the museum, and the way your artwork has influenced the guitars and the museum. And yes. then, of course, technical people like um, Tim Teal, We've had right. Skip on. I've got some other people that, have, that might be coming on in the future when things get a bit quieter. But, but it, it, it's, it's nice because it, it, there is, I think if you just go to the, the factory and you see all these things, you might not even re, kind of realize what they are or, or, who, uh -huh. who, or who made them. So it's nice, to, it's nice to really discuss these things in detail. Before we go, Aaron, do you yeah. want to throw up the, the mural? I do. I just want to go through the comments, though, make sure I, I, like, I don't like to miss anyone out on the comments. Yeah, okay. And I invite your viewers to ask questions. Yeah, please ask questions. Um, we go to where I left off before. Someone said I want to see polka dogs. So we, I won't cover that today um, because that's not one of your art pieces. But uh, just Google polka dogs Martin and, and look it up on YouTube. It's actually linked on my YouTube channel. And that's got me playing the guitar. I think it's kind of cool. Hmm. Um, okay, let me yeah. just go through, go through. Uh, my friend says it's okay. You're young, Aaron. Uh, when I said I didn't know about the Woodstock <laughs> poster, I love that poster. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not. I don't try to surmise that I know everything. I, I, I my area is acoustic guitar pickups and and um, you know playing and singing. But I, I love learning too. Like I've, I, I learn so much every time I have a guest on here. I love that. Uh, Marco says 
He was a fisherman as a younger guy. That's why I want to, want to see the fly fishing guitar. Alec wow. Bowen's here. Hi, Alec. Good to see you, buddy. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Positive feedback is much better than regular guitar feedback. Yes, it is. We don't want any feedback from our guitars. Um, do you have any other guitar artists, any guitar artists who you admire and have influenced your work? Where, where do you get your influences from? Oh, that's very interesting. Well, until I got on Instagram, I didn't realize that there were a lot of wonderful guitar artists. Um, I thought I was kind of going into this actually really blind. I never had designed a guitar before this 175th, and I don't know of anybody ever doing anything like that as, as far as um, acoustic guitars. You know, I've seen designs on uh, solid body electrics and things, but as far as the uh, paintings on an acoustic guitar, I really never saw anything like that. So I thought I was maybe setting new ground, but I have to say, and anytime I run across an artist who's doing anything, whether it's guitar art, I'm just amazed, you know, it's not, for me, it's not a comp uh, competition. Mm -hmm. I'm not competing against other artists. I'm enjoying their work. I'm hoping that they're enjoying my work and that we're all feeding this giant creative pool just to make uh, art and, and art that uh, speaks to, to people in different ways, whether it's on a guitar or whether it's on a magazine or whether it's a, on a painting in a wall, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Bogue in the museum. I didn't know And he was a tough act to follow, I have to tell you. Dick Bogue set the standard at really high at Martin Guitar as far as doing designs. And uh, it's an intimidating thing to look in that museum and realize that this really, I think, pretty much Dick Bogue's hand was in every display case. And now I'm sort of in charge of changing things up. And, uh, you know, I don't want to erase any of the work that Dick Bogue, but I want to kind of make it a consistent story following what he did so there's a challenge there well also dick bogue is an artist right and and he has a guitar <laughs> yeah yeah and he has a guitar with um his guitar his personal guitar has his artwork on it so yes. so he does it too yeah i didn't yeah that's cool yeah. um the first dreadnought was made for ditson yes thank you ennis yep uh liz says looks like Liz says looks like john mayer yeah, yeah, I, I, I just chickened out from saying, oh, it's John Mayer, because then you were going to say it's someone else and someone's going to say, why didn't you know that artist? So now I just look silly anyway for not saying it was John Mayer. Yes, it does look it like John It could have been my Uncle Harry and you would have looked Yeah, no, that's Chris Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Liz, you're right. It does look like John Mayer. I'm not saying it doesn't. Um, Bob says, thank you, Aaron and Robert, for more in-depth knowledge about Martin guitars. I love what I learn here on Aaron's shows. Well, thank you, Bob. And I appreciate Robert being here. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, we haven't finished yet but if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do and if you've got any friends that be interested in this kind of content either me playing and singing or interviewing or talking about guitars or gear please share it with them and ask them to watch and subscribe as well because that's how i can grow my channel so uh to finish up you asked me to show which one was oh, the mural it? Yeah. the mural okay so let me bring that one up on the screen and if we ever get back into the museum when you go up there Mm. Um, maybe we can meet and see some of the guitars firsthand so that you're not just looking at images. I am hoping to bring my camera and maybe we can go in after hours and do a walkthrough just for my channel. So stay tuned for that. That would be awesome. Okay. I'd love to, you know, then we can focus on the pickups and the guitars that I'm interested in. That'd be amazing. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Andreas. Awesome interview. Yes, it has been. And, and we can do more of the, you know, what I love about Skype is we can do this at any time. So if you have a guitar coming out, a new model coming out with the art on, we could just go oh. live. We can go live and just talk about that guitar. You can show okay, the well, There is something special coming, but I'd love to do that. Yeah. So let's try and time that so we go live the day it's announced or the press release goes out. And okay. then we can just show images that you have. And we, you know, even if it's a 30 minute um, stream, we can just you know talk about that guitar it, it itself. So that'd okay. be awesome. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun chatting with you. Do we really have to go? <laughs> yeah, I love, I love it too. But the only problem with me is um, I don't have any AC on and I'm kind of cooking right now, but okay, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I, I love, I love these chats. I love the fact that we can just sit here casually and chat about stuff that's, um, important to us and people watching as well. It's just awesome, you know? So tell me, tell me about the mural cause I've got it up on the screen. Okay. And that's one panel that you're looking at. Yeah. So this, this came about, which was, it was very much my own idea. And again, it was an offshoot from wanting to do a children's book. I thought there's a lot of wall space here in your factory. Couldn't we tell the story through a mural of the, you know, the founding of Martin Guitar through today? 
Mm. And uh, I thought I was really clever coming up with some wonderful ideas. And then when I started working on it, I became so intimidated by the fact that there are so many more people with more knowledge than I could ever have uh, regarding Martin guitar. And I started panicking because I didn't want to put the wrong tuner on top of a guitar that shouldn't have this. And, and it took about six, about a year of panel, about six years to get this thing from start to finish complete. And um, it's done in sort of a collage technique where I did a lot of these images and then attached them separately. So there's some depth to them. And I created some log books from uh, the early years about uh, from the shop foreman. They would write in the serial, serial numbers or the neck widths or something. And I created these log books to uh, stick in place. Dick at the time gave me access to all the stuff in the uh, archive room. And it was just an amazing learning experience as far as uh, seeing all the stuff that the Martins had saved over the years and mm. some historically important pieces. Mm. So it ties in with that first guitar in the children's book that I, I will do someday. That's amazing. I got that up on the screen. It's huge. It looks so cool. Yes, it is. It's so, uh, 12 where? feet across <laughs> by six feet high. So where is this? Is this at the factory? Yes, when you go into the factory, uh, yeah, what they call the visitor center behind the reception desk, there's a wall that contains this painting. So I've probably seen it then. Cause was, yes. was, that, was that there like two years ago? Uh, yeah, it went in about 2016. Yeah, that's when, I, that's when I started going. I would have seen that. Wow. There were six separate panels that if you removed one, you could hang it up separate and it would tell a story from that era. I'm so sure I've seen it. Connected. I'm sure I've seen it. And if I look back at pictures of me there, I'm sure it's right behind me. Unfortunately, yep. you know, I apologize. Sometimes these things are, you know, sometimes our art is there and we don't realize it's there. Right. But I mean, how, well, how could I have missed that? It's, 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 it's so, overwhelming when you go to the factory. Well, it's, it's like, too much. Yeah. Too much information. Yeah. There's a museum that you walk in and there's the lovely receptionist. And then there's on your left, there's this huge museum that's, you know, but you barely even realize it's there. And then right. you've got the, the gift shop, which I always like to walk <laughs> around. And I've got the yep. I've got the stalls from there. And then right. you've got the picking parlor, which I wish there were more. I, you know, I, I kind of as a fan, I wish there was one of every guitar in the picking parlor. But then I guess oh. people will never leave. But I, right. I'd, lo I'd love to part. The, I'd love a part of the factory to be more guitars, I feel, that you can play. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the tour, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. And then you go across the street and have the pizza. <laughs> yeah. Or you go to Pizza Hut down the street. I mean, it's just awesome. It's just like the best day out ever. And the behind right. the scenes tour is even better. You get to see Chris's personal collection all on the shelves and all the wood and everything. And yes. yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I, I would like to see um, a larger picking parlor with more guitars. But then the problem with that is you might not get people out of there. They might just sit there all day playing a different well, guitar. That's part of the problem. You know, <laughs> you mentioned about the, the factory. It's like getting that golden ticket from Willy Wonka. You know, when they let you in, here's how they do it. And mm. here's all the stuff. It's, it is. It's overwhelming. There's so much to take in if you're not there very often if it's a one-time deal it's it's a lot to take in yeah again that's why i've enjoyed this series of interviews because i get a real in-depth understanding of all this so mm -hmm. so bemo says uh, master work so you so uh, yeah, thank you patsy smith everyone everyone enjoyed it you made you, you did all this yourself this whole mural yourself all this yes stuff? wow that's that's a so it took you a year that's crazy in, in fact the um character or the uh, the uh, the model that posed for C.F. Martin Sr. as a young man was named Chris also. So I really went, mm. you know, in search of <laughs> authenticating wow. the history of the guitar by finding a kid who happened to be my son named Chris and gave him a cardboard guitar to hold while I, he posed for me and I was able to paint him. Wow. And, and I see the original guitar case there on the top left. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Which you, mm -hmm. have, you have there, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, not the what? model that uh, they have in the museum. I was going to say, is that for the museum, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, actually, I did not take it out of the museum. <laughs> he just I realized, think, oops, oops, if Chris is watching, that's that's a replica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And I'll just finish by showing you. I always like to put this guy in the shot for my... There we go. Okay. Why has there been no elephant artwork to you know for your, your campaign about the elephants save the elephants well and that's something that is being i have i did not share those drawings but we are thinking of doing a series of um of 
sort of endangered species. Mm, that would be nice. That would be nice. So, yes, the elephants are on as part of that series. Mm. But things move very slowly sometimes as far as projects go with the factory. Mm. And it depends on, you know, on a lot of different things. But there is talk about it, and I've gone and, and done some preliminary drawings mm. yeah. of the guitars. So. Well, this has been awesome. And uh, we haven't covered all of the all the guitars or all the art, but I think we covered a lot. We've been going for an hour and a half. Yeah. And we went pretty much straight into it. So I think we've done yeah. good. Um, I'll, you know, please subscribe. If, if, you, if you're new to the channel, I've got interviews with Dick Boak, with Skip Belt, um, yep. lots of people from Martin. So please do, please do uh, subscribe and go back and watch those videos and share them. I really do appreciate it. And mm -hmm. um, I'll just say, like I say to everyone, Robert, let's do this again. Okay. Um, if you've got something coming out, let's let's go live. If you want to just do another chat, if, we, if we've missed any guitars that you you realize, we can we can do a part two. Hopefully, okay. hopefully when things reopen, I can come and we'll do a special session at the museum. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. Patsy Smith says best interview yet. Wow, that's a high accolade. Well, I, and you were a great interviewer. I have to say, this was a lot of fun. Low key, low pressure. I could, you know. I could have a beer with you at a bar sometime and we could chat all night. But that's why this is great. This is like, you know, I know it's not real life, but it's like we're, 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 we're almost face to face. And I'm just asking you my honest thoughts and questions that I'm sure a lot of people are thinking. I'm not trying to, you know, pretend that I know all the stuff because I don't. I know a lot of my friends do know it. I'm still learning it. That's OK. There's a lot to learn. And I just love the fact we have people watching. You know, we, we yes. have we have 18 in the chat. There's also people watching that we don't see in the chat. So we, we could we have a lot of people, and then you can watch it again. You know, yep. if you if you want to watch it again, and and if you missed any information, it's just I just love the I love how informal it is, and yet um, how comprehensive it can be. It's, it's, it's I love this I love this format. And let's face it, right now this is kind of the, the future is now with this stuff, right? So yes. again, so again, if you want to do this again, we'll do it. Um, don't forget as well, we could always do. Um, multiple guests. We could have you and Dick Boak on and talk about the, the whole museum from start to finish, something like that. So okay. I'm, I'm always here. I'm always happy to, happy to go live with anyone um, to provide content. So that's awesome. Okay. So, so thank you so well, much. Fun. Where can thank people you. go if people want to commission a, a project or see more of your, inf you know, find out more information about you? Where can they go to find out uh, information? Uh, that's a good question because I don't have a website or I'm not <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> I kind of play, you know, low key. If they want a guitar, I would suggest first they contact Martin Guitar right. and talk to the custom shop. And if they want a Robert Getzel artwork on it, then, you know, they'll put me in touch somehow with the people who want to commission a guitar. and We'll work it out from there. OK. Um, but so, I mean, thank you. For, you know, <laughs> I know in this day and age, I ought to have a Facebook page and a, and a website, but I don't. You can look for me on Instagram. Instagram. Yep. Yep. We're friends on Instagram. And also please follow me, Aaron Short Music on Instagram as well. So thank you so much for this. And thanks to Craig Thatcher for putting us in touch. Yeah. That's been Craig's great. a great guy. I'm glad he yeah. suggested this. Yep. Yeah. And um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. I think we're going to wrap it up now. Please subscribe. Okay. Watch out. I've got videos coming this week. I've got the live concert every weekend. So come and request mm -hmm. a song. And until next time, thank you so much. Um, thanks for doing this, Robert. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Aaron. Awesome. Everyone be well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.